The next topic in AQA Decision 2 is called Critical Path Analysis. We're going to start off by looking at how we set up activity networks. Here we see a table showing tasks involved in a project and which tasks need to be finished before another task can start. So for example, D can't start until A is finished. E can't start until B is finished. G requires C, D and E to be completed. So we have three activities that don't require anything to be completed. So for our activity network, we start off with those and you'll see that in the middle here, we have the duration of those tasks. As D depends on A, we then draw a directed arc between A and D, and you see here D is put with the duration in the middle there. Okay, now it's starting to look a bit messy. We avoid this. So what we need to do now is to redraw the network. Now this is something you need to be prepared to do. So you might want to either do this lightly in pencil the first time round, or possibly just quickly sketch it on a scrap of paper so that you can then cross things out and do it and present it properly. As we've now finished, we now need an end activity because F and G are both at the end of the project. So we place the end node there and this now enables us to find out how long the project will take. The first part of this process is to put the earliest time that each activity can start. So obviously A, B and C can all start at time 0. D requires A to complete, so D can't start until A is completed, so the earliest that will be is 3. E and F require B to finish, so that will be an earliest time of 4. G requires C, D and D to finish. So C finishes, the earliest C can finish is at 6. D requires both A and D, so that's 8. And E is 5. So we take the latest of these because it requires all three to have completed. So there we put 15 there. And that actually tells us the duration of the project. To complete the network though, we now look at the latest time that each activity can start without delaying the whole project. This is always the case that the end event has the same early and late time, and as both F and G go directly to the end activity, they can't finish any later than 15. Okay, now hopefully you can follow this. It's fairly self-explanatory. The 
see here, what we're doing is we're subtracting the length of the activity from this. So we can see here that A is late time is 3. Right, B is slightly different because it leads into both E and F. So 8 minus 1 gives us 7 for E, but then 15 minus 6 gives us 9 for F. On this occasion we have to take the earliest of the late times because we want to avoid delaying the project, and if we waited till 9 we would delay the start of E by 2. So we see here that we can complete in 15 hours. We're interested in critical activities. These are activities that can't be changed. You can see here that the length, there's early and late times. If you subtract the early from the late time, you get the duration of the project for all those. So the key ones really are ADG there. And we call ADG the critical path. They're the three activities that have to be started and finished without any scope for change.